in Concern Medicine USC and PhD in Renewable Energy Activities from IIT Kanpur. So, thank you, Vidushi. Uh, uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are very much audible. The presentation is there on the screen. Okay. For us. Okay, so uh, since we are running uh, short of time, I will uh, be a uh, little uh, quick on my presentation because we have a question answer uh, session also after that. So I'm going to talk about RANS and PHM on Indian Railways uh, specifically. Uh, present status is that Indian Railways is very seriously into uh, RANS and PHM. RDSO has set up uh, where I work. It is called Research Design and Standards Organization. It is the research and uh, design wing of the uh, Ministry of Railways. Uh, presently headed by our Director General, uh, <coughs> Shri Virendra Kumar. So RDSO has set up a Center for Reliability and Integrated Systems Engineering. And this center is equipped with the central server, reliability software, and dedicated internet connectivity. And uh, we have trained certain personnel from carriage, wagon, electric, locomotive power departments. And we have taken up certain projects in collaboration with IT Kharagpur from the group uh, of uh, Subhi Chaudhary School of uh, Reliability and Quality. Uh, for example, we have taken up uh, RAMS analysis of LHB and ISC of coaches, FMEC of coach bogies, RAMS analysis of diesel locomotives, reliability study of the traction motors of electric locomotives, then data collection system in coaching depots and railway workshops, reliability analysis of turbochargers of diesel locomotives and some of the projects. One of the things that has come to our notice that data collection is an area of uh, immense improvement on railways and we are working towards improving it. Uh, <clears throat> for the IT Kharagpur projects, I would like to mention that we I worked with uh, Professor Goel uh, who works uh, with uh, Professor Chaturvedi. Uh, recently, then we, Railway, uh, Ministry of Railways has started looking at implementation of the RAMS and the PHM program on a very wide scale all over Indian railways. And recently, Railway Board has sanctioned a project for implementation of EN50126 RAMS for rolling stock of Indian railways at a cost of rupees 400 crore. And uh, <clears throat> so, EN50126 has already been spoken by Dr. Varma, so I'll not repeat that. And uh, it is the purport of the project, this project which has been sanctioned by the Railway Board to cover all aspects of life cycle of rolling stock, that is design, manufacturing, so design begins at RDSO or at production units, manufacturing, production units, ICF, RCF, and MCF, railway workshops, then also private workshops, uh, you know, the wagon manufacturers, maintenance depots, and maintenance yards. And we have actually prepared a concept note, uh, and we are in the. <clears throat> eventually, this implementation will also be rolled out for all assets of Indian railways, that is, track, signals, electric infrastructure, etc. Uh, the vision of RDSO is to be a leader in research and innovation with focus on reliability and maintenance of railway systems. So that fits in beautifully with our RAMS and PHM initiatives or Ministry of Railways. Uh, certain PHM initiatives have already been taken on Indian Railways. For example, condition monitoring of permanent ways. We have uh, these track recording cars and oscillation car, uh, oscillation cars, oscillation measurement cars, where we measure the unevenness, alignment, twist, gauge, vertical wear, lateral wear, angular wear of the of the tracks, and also look at the various physical conditions of the uh, the sleepers, track settings, etc. And uh, we are also doing subjective assessment of track health through acceleration monitoring at the bogey pivot and riding comfort. And we are also doing is uh, we are also planning to do track components scanning through high, res high resolution and high speed cameras to identify the track defect uh, component defects. Then we in the field of track installation that is basically the overhead installations we have got tower cars equipped with measuring and recording instrumentation we also plan to measure OHG geometry parameters span to contact wire interaction then locations with imminent failures can be attended in time so that and we are planning a predictive monitoring of insulators using ultrasonic scanning thermal imaging of and partial discharge and RDSO has also prepared a draft guidelines for condition monitoring of transformers 
then uh, on the coaching side uh, we have developed the onboard condition monitoring of bearings of coaches uh, we have used in industry uh, one of the private uh, industry is a wireless condition monitoring system for condition monitoring of wheel bearing and track as part of the pilot project and we are also using sensorized bearing with tread bit tread bit uh, unit with the speed and temperature sensors then in the signaling we are using the sanelec standards which uh, dr verma already talked about and we are looking at uh, sia levels uh, and uh, data loggers uh, railway signaling system is using a lot of data loggers which have been networked and in which three types of alarms are generated maintenance safety and traffic related and sent in sms to maintenance staff to reduce equipment downtime on the locomotives we have developed the remote monitoring and management of locomotives and trains that is ramlog which gives an online monitoring of the loco health and fleet management through web based application we are also doing wayside monitoring of bearings through acoustic signatures bridge condition monitoring projects are also being undertaken we have already taken some projects in which we are using underwater drones to study the the pirates of the bridges and to inform the <clears throat> and to give out the data on the condition by taking photographs and also uh assess certain other attributes of the pirates and the structures electric locomotive components online condition monitoring is also being done so this is as far as the phm on the indian railways bank is being done and there are other sudden certain other project uh, pilot projects which are also being done but there are certain issues of our phm on indian railways most of these systems are stand alone industry developed systems being used there is no common protocol so we very yeah, urgently require a common it backbone and indian railways ministry of railways is working towards that of course we have not covered all the areas and we would like to cover uh, you know as a make it as a system of systems and uh, we would like to use uh, data analytics ai ml based uh, rul remaining useful life predictions uh, these are not available right now but we are trying to work in that direction at uh, takur basti we have set up a phm center uh, that has started working but uh, it needs to be augmented uh, quite a lot and we are doing more experiments also in certain other areas like traction traction motor bearing temperature and uh, and and another and uh, uh, transformer uh, condition monitoring etc however we are uh, we are also looking at a common program for adoption of a structured phm uh, which should be done by indian railways and the most important thing is that we need to skill our indian railways personnel in phm and data analytics very urgently so this is the we, we have made a ramps for rolling stock of uh, indian railways a quick uh, we will start with right from the purchase order manufacturing data workshops depot yards then on board diagnostics wayside diagnostics and customer requirements and chris is our uh, is the is the our organization who handles uh, our it and data related work so chris will be uh, hosting all the servers the ram servers will be hosted by rdso and then we'll be doing the various activities like fault tree analysis liability centered maintenance programs dfmm then dfr uh designed for uh, manufacturing and maintainability reliability operations life cycle costing fmeca fmmeca and all this this will be all be integrated in design and fetching maintenance and operations and of course then we'll have the dashboards for uh, various uh, starting from the minister uh, right down to you know tracking the the assets and their problems uh this is the framework for ram lcc management uh, which i have uh, taken from the book of uh, dr uh there's uh, professor delson and this basically shows the various concepts of uh, ram lcc management is concept and definition design and development manufacturing and construction assembly and integration operation maintenance and disposal and then at various stages we have integration of ram lcc requirements then determination of requirements and demonstration of requirements and on the feedback loop we have the maintenance engineering maintenance and apportionment uh, <coughs> apportionment of ramps and lcc requirements to subsystems so this is a framework that we we are uh, trying to follow on indian railways as well we have got on the indian railways we have a huge inventory of assets we have 3 lakh wagons and uh, that is 300000 wagons 
60,000 passenger coaches, 10,000 EMUs and demos, 11,000 locomotives, 70,000 kilometers of track, which is increasing every day, 50,000 kilometers of OFC lines, 7,500 railway stations, 33,000 kilometers of track circuiting, 45,000 kilometers of electrified lines, 1.5 lakh bridges. So asset management in ramps of assets becomes a complex due to linear nature of these assets because they are distributed all over the country and they are moving all over the country, for example, the rolling stock. So it becomes a little more, a uh, bigger problem for, uh, for, for Indian railways because of the size and the volume. So for the rolling stock, coming to the rolling stock, uh, the design is done at RDSO, vendor premises and other production units. Manufacturing is done in our three factories. And then we have a large network of maintenance points for both coaching and wagon stock. For the coaching stock, we have uh, workshops, primary depots, secondary depots. For freight stock, we have POH and ROH workshops, maintenance yards. And then we have preventive maintenance schedule strip quarterly, six monthly, yearly, two yearly, followed by POH. And that's a typographical POH. 44 railway workshops on Indian railways in different geographical areas to carry out these activities. So you can see the lot of money we are spending on maintenance activities and in asset uh, maintain and, and in ensuring that the assets are available and they are safe to, to use for the passengers who would like to bring down those costs at the same time maintaining the safety of these assets. Uh, these are the preventive maintenance schedules. Uh, for uh, We have got uh, two types of coaches, LHV coaches and ICF coaches. And then we have wagons. So we have got uh, different types of maintenance schedules. Uh, for the concept of the roadmap that we are going to do for the RAMs and PHM for our uh, rolling stock, uh, we will implement EN50126. So that will include our center of reliability at RDSO, CRIS, production units, workshops, suppliers, maintenance depots, maintenance yards, and private wagon manufacturers. We will be requiring a host of machines and equipment, including data analytics, AI, and reliability engineering related, integrated maintain maintenance units and diagnostics and prognostics, then direct part marking for the traceability of the various components, the smart metallurgy systems, then learning management systems for our scaling of our people, machine capability study processes and their equipment, smart material handling systems. In the business process engineering, we'll require vendor development processes to be rewritten, procurement processes to be rewritten, introduction of 16 extra vendor development procedure, which is a standard, uh, international standard, uh, maybe use of ISO TS16949 and QS9000, uh, stores and uh, finance code revision, then production process re-engineering use of modularity in design and production. This is the this is the intelligent manufacturing system we are looking at in our production units so that we can improve the ramps characteristics of our uh, assets. And this is a brief about modular manufacturing, which I'll not go into uh, detail because of the uh, shortage of time. But I'll just like to mention here that in in modular manufacturing, sorry, in modular manufacturing there is a requirement of uh, uh, of a uh, digital twin for the complete production process and in the in the digital design uh, modularity we it is a, called a lego design wherein you know the designs are standard of the component parts of the components are designs are standard that can be put together either to make a house or an aeroplane or a scooter so that is a new concept of manufacturing which is coming which is basically designed for high reliability and, man and manufacturing uh, we are also have uh, introduced Industry 4.0. MCF has started the process of implementing Industry 4.0. That will also add to our uh, increasing the RAMs reliability uh, of the of the our assets uh, at, uh, to start with the coaching assets. And then we are looking at various methods like a digital backbone for collection and maintenance of design, manufacturing, maintenance, and operation data. Connectivity between Chris, RDSO, production units, workshops, maintenance sheds, then implementation of RAMS management system for rolling stock and stability index, process reengineering, and using various uh, methods. We are also looking at skilling and knowledge enhancement, skilling and knowledge enhancement uh, certification courses and RAMS and PHM that we have tied up with the Gautam Buddha University and two-year online master's courses in RAMS and PHM, webinars, workshops in the fields, hands-on training sessions, PHM and RAMS training to become part of our central training institutes. Uh, we are looking at handling and logistics, so smart metal handling, material movement corridors, 
including underground and overground material tracking systems with digital identification bins, scaling and material handling. And these are the timelines that we, have look, we are looking at a two years time. It is a ambitious target. Uh, however, we are uh, very firm and resolute in our desire to do so. And, uh, and these are the various uh, milestones that we have provided on this timeline. So uh, we plan to finish this project in next two years time and also take up projects in other areas like uh, infrastructure areas for implementation of EM50126. So basically what I'm trying to say is that Indian Railways have recognized this problem and they have taken up this challenge of introducing EN50126 uh, on its, for its assets and also implementation of ISO 55000 for asset management. Uh, we, we are willing to partner with the industry, with academia in these programs, and I welcome all from industry and academia to participate in this. Uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be sharing our contact details shortly. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Your kind support will be always required to start up this application course. course, and we really look forward that uh, we come up 